Okay, everyone. So today is the dot learning day three, and I'm currently familiarizing myself with the different interface of the Godot engine. And these are some of the things that I have recently learned. And last time we did utilize the Godot engine to figure out how to set up a player and a platform, a very simple movement of left and right, and some collision. So just to be more familiarize with the different parts of the dot engine i just want to talk more about some of the different things that we are seeing here so let's say here as i've read it uh, we do call this as the main menu for the uh, dot engine from where we can create new scenes save scenes and so on uh, and here we can set up some project settings especially here we do find the input map which is i'm sure going to be definitely going to be useful especially for us to be able to map a string value from where we can uh, use that for ui focus mapping that will allow us to have some ui ui focus uh to set up specific keys or key combination sets so if we try to show built-in actions, you will see we have UI accept, UI select, UI cancel, and so on. And I think this is definitely going to be something that we, we will need to work with if we are going to be building a project. So we'd like to explore that so uh, some other time. And right now, we also have what we call here the workspace switching buttons. So we have the main menu. Debug, Editor, Settings, and the Help uh, menu here. And we have the Workspace switching buttons that allows us to switch from 2D, 3D, to check out the workspace for the script. And we have the Asset Library. And in here, we have what we call Playtest button on the right. And if we try to, again, use that. Uh, that data as you will see it will allow us to go and look at the current progress of our uh, basic game here so we do have that and we have some interface here that goes uh comes along with the playtest buttons on the right side we have the play pause running project we have the stop running project and we also have this no remote debug export presets configured in unity we have that step button that will allow us to click it so that we can see the current uh step frame by frame um uh, movement of of whatever code that we have written that will allow some of the interactions in our game scene and in here we have what we call the run current scene and this is going to be the edit scene and if we try to just it's a much faster if you try to look at it okay uh not too much difference but we'll try to explore what could be the difference between this button and this button and i think that's something that we would want to further understand and better understand run specific scene so that means uh, we do have an option to go and create scenes uh, last time we did create a scene here uh, we can also add more scenes and this is actually what we call the or we can see that this is an open scene if we try to close that we can find an empty scene right and if we try to go and let's see you will see we can add multiple scenes here and if i close this that does not work it's not working uh, but we can go and open it up here that's the main scene we can create some more scenes if we wanted to so you would see same process and we'll just have to save it as a main.tscn so i won't, don't want that yet so i'm just going to don't save that so this is the workspace button 
We have the play test buttons, the main menu, and here are the different tabs for the different tabs for different scenes that we can try to work on. And uh, in here, we do have here what we call distraction or distraction free mode that we can toggle around so that the inspector and the uh, the scene workspace here or panel will not be shown so i think that's why it's called this uh, distraction free mode and it will be restoring the viewport size by hiding the different dots uh, and you see we have much more space to look at the game scene here or the main scene And we do have here the toolbar that will have some different tools that we can use depending on the uh, workspace option that we will be choosing. If it's a 3D, we do have some, some different tools like movement tool. We have the rotate mode. We have here the scale mode. I think this is something that uh, everyone are a bit familiar if you're using the unity game engine we do have those options uh, in the unity game engine and we are still going to have to figure out what are those other tools here and i think the better way to look at them is that we create some scenes that will contain some assets into them but let's not do that for now uh, perhaps we can do that in some other videos in the future. So, uh, the next thing that I just want to look at here, this is the, the 2D workspace active. You will see it's active. We have here the active 3D workspace. And, uh, again, these are the four main screens that we can work on if we're working on the dot and we do see here that we have some docs at the bottom window or uh, on the bottom left part we have what we call the bottom panel that is also called docs and it contains a file system. And as when I say file system, we will see these are the assets that we have. And I think we can create folders in here. And let's create a folder for, let's say, artwork. And let's go send the square and the yellow. Let's just see if this will still run uh, the same way if we organize our folder. So you will see it's automatically detecting the creation of the folder and it's not breaking our game here. Uh, we can still jump and so on. So we can try to organize uh, our items here. So let's say I'm going to call this scenes and main scene. And I think we can have here All right, so we can also create here. I believe we can also create a folder for scripts. And we know that the last thing we did will be this player GD is a script, right? So if we go and again, the workspace for the player GD script. And let's just see if this will work and still run. And we do see that the player does still jump. That's nice. So that means we didn't break anything. We just organized the folders into scripts, scenes. All right. So we are now more familiarized with the file system doc. And we do have the inspector doc from where we can go and manipulate the different properties. And again, we just try to explore this some other time as we try to work with adding more assets. So the inspector doc here will be allowing us to 
manipulate the properties of a selected node. And these are what we call nodes. If I'm not making a mistake, we can refer to this as nodes. And we can see also here at the bottom part or the bottom panel, we have what we call the console. So in the bottom panel, we can go and try to do some debugging. And we also can try to expand it. Now, I think this is definitely going to be essential for our development. And I just want to go back here and we can see that these are the four main screens. So here we'll be working with two games. Uh, here we can have uh, three games. Or we can try to work with mattress, lights, or design levels for three games. I see we have the similar thing with vendor. And also, and we also have here the script screen, which is basically already a complete code editor with a debugger that we can try to use. It also has auto completion and built in code references. So, I think that's it for now. I think those are the very basic of the dot engine interface, and we can try to further explore that together as we go along with some more exploration on how to use the dot for game development. So thank you and see you on our next video.